Today we're playing with new makeup from Sephora. It's important to get this stuff in under the buzzer right now because we're still in the VIB sale currently. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh y'all, I finally got a bunch of stuff in my hands. I have the new Manifest palette from Aether. It's neutrals and mauves. Basically a love letter to yours truly. I'm so excited to play with this today. This palette's not on Sephora. <laughs> It's on Aether and Credo, but it's not going to be at Sephora. <laughs> this is why I don't do sponsorships for the big sales and stuff, because like half the time I have no idea what I'm talking about anyway. Either way, <laughs> you get 15% off of it with my code on the Aether website, but it's not, it's not in the Sephora sale. Apologies, everything else in the video is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Callie Ray reached out and asked if I wanted to try some of their stuff. So they sent me their skin tints, their eyeliners, their lip glosses. And because y'all requested it, I bought this. This is the Merit Balm Cheek Color in the shade Mood. And it is really going to cast the mood for the entire look today because it's the most unbelievable berry shade ever. So let's start with some skin prep. I also went on my Instagram and asked for questions from y'all. So we're gonna give that a minute. Mmm, coast is plump and juicy, plump and juice me, okay? Because it's just, I've been letting everything really dry out because of my perioral dermatitis, but I don't know if you can tell, but it's improving and it is not from the antibiotic topical. Okay, are you dead or alive? Are you on the inside or the outside? I think you're dead and on the outside. Say wow. My husband, for reasons, had a tube of prescription strength antifungal. I have a theory, and it is that I have been using towels that have been sitting wet, basically, because I wash my face so often. I'm constantly just like wiping and reaching for the next thing. And it's possible that maybe the hygiene of those towels was a little bit compromised and that's what's causing this situation right here. So yeah, I've been treating it with my high frequency device because I've heard <laughs> that that would help with a bacterial situation. But more than anything, I mean, this is just an overnight improvement just from using that topical that is an antifungal, not an antibiotic. Cross your fingers for me. So yeah, that was the plump and juicy, and then I'm going to plump and juicy my lips also. Still loving this little skin prep combo from Kosa's. Just really brings your girl back to life. But yeah, the whole point of saying that was that in order to not exacerbate perioral dermatitis, you're supposed to let it kind of stay as dry as possible and minimize actives and heavy moisturizers and everything. And like, I want to get back to using retinols. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so everything's really dry. Everything's just dry. Okay, I'm gonna swatch both shades that they sent me. I think I know which one, I mean, I know which one I have liked the last couple of times I've used it, but I'm not gonna mix them together because y'all know that's a hard and fast rule on my channel. We don't mix shades together because you're not gonna go and buy two shades and mix them together. That's ridiculous. So I have shade two and shade four. This is a little pet peeve of mine, but they call it the two and the four. Why? Why does it bother me? But also why'd they do that? So this is a like very liquidy skin tint, kind of like the Kosa's, but it's got more sophistication and complexity to the formula itself. So here we have the four. Yeah. The undertones might be okay, but it's just a little bit dark. And then here we have the two. Clearly we're gonna go for the two. I have some new brushes from BK also. They expanded their range. So I haven't opened all of them. I've opened some of them, but I haven't gotten a chance to open all of them. So we might be using a few of those today and I'll mention them, but I'm going to start by putting just a little bit of this everywhere except my perioral dermatitis. And then I'll kind of like tap it on there last so that we're not spreading it all over my face, you know? So it has a smell. It's like that, that sweet kind, it's not a fragrance, it's like a... It is a fragrance. <laughs> it smells kind of like uh, Herewise. Hoping that this is okay for my skin right now. It's definitely not heavy. It says prickly pear hydration, sheer buildable application, blurring illusion, vitamin C and E infusion, silicone free foundation. It definitely behaves better than a silicone tree foundation typically would. And it's doing a great job. It really warms up without getting like soupy. Like that was my hang up with the Merit one. I was like, 
it's like not warming to my skin. Although I am gonna use that again today and really give it another shot just because a lot of people did say that it's better to use it with my fingers and I did use it a little bit with my fingers but I'd like to kind of like give it a fair shake and use it also with a little bit of skin tint underneath it and see if I can get something that I like from it. So yeah, this is the Merit Minimalist in Silk and I do like the shade a lot. And if you didn't watch that last one, this will be a nice little refresher. So this is what it looks like. It is 1.7 X, the amount that was in the container when they first released it. And they've also increased the shade range, but not the price is my understanding. So I'm again, gonna save my dermatitis for last here. Although I'm starting to feel like I'm winning, you know, like I'm gaining on it. It was really feeling very out of control and I've been using a lot of light therapy on it. So everything from the high frequency device to my LED mask from Dennis Gross to my light stim for acne, they all have seemed to help. But the one thing that was not helping was an antibiotic cream. I'm gonna use a different finger here <laughs> and just tippy tap. But it's like drying up, but also shrinking now. Again, just send good vibes. So it really doesn't take much. It feels nice. And I think with that already underneath it, maybe it'll work a little bit better. The component is absolutely gorgeous. Is it not with the gold? It's so pretty. I'm really like, I have high hopes for it. You know, I did spend my money on it. Like I wanna like it, but I'm still not sure that it's like as good as my blender cover. I fully meant to use this today. I did, I fully meant to use that. Gosh darn it, oh my goodness gracious. This is the Sikapair from Dr. Jart and it's green. I don't know, let's try it. This is probably a horrible idea. But like there's not that much on my skin right now anyway. That is categorically not the worst thing that I've ever done. And I will leave it at that. <laughs> but hopefully it actually helps and I'll probably throw some powder on there before it's all said and done. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's supposed to be pretty good for these kinds of situations and it's also color canceling and green. And it came in that kit that I was talking about. So this is one of the full size items. There's also a full size ceramiden and a full size of the Tiger Grass Sleep Hair Intensive Mask. And then there's a sheet mask in there as well. Cute. I can't wait to get back to being able to use that moisturizer though, because it's so lovely. That actually made a big difference. That's kind of wild. I don't love the texture. Cause like, <laughs> I genuinely just don't love the texture on my skin right now. Like my skin is a gross texture, but the color cancellation, I have never been a green color cancellation person because I don't suffer from a lot of redness usually, but that made a huge difference. It completely neutralized it. Neat color theory. I love color theory. <laughs> and I seriously, I, I dabbed my finger in there so lightly. This would last you forever and it no expiration date apparently. Ooh, it's got broad spectrum SPM 30 in it. Cool, because like you're supposed to put sun, like, you know, really put sunscreen on this kind of thing. So an extra layer of sunscreen and color cancellation and a little bit of coverage and like actual treatment. That's cool. Neutralizes redness, protects skin, improves skin appearance to be vibrant. So far, I mean, first impression, obviously, you know, take it with like a load of salt, but like that was, that was cool. I liked that a lot. <laughs> Gonna keep you right where I can see you. We're gonna go in with some bronzer. I recently discovered, it. why did no one tell me about this? Why did no one tell me about this? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna not be mad about it and just share what I'm talking about. Hope Miss Tom, do y'all know Hope Miss Tom? Hannah is very good friends with them and they have a channel that's fairly new but they have like the stuff that it takes, right? Like the personality, the creativity, the skills, the point of view. And I happened to run across one of their videos that's like becoming and then like a creator that they like. So they did one about me with another creator. It was like a, it was like a collab. I have never been so humbled in my life, but it was so cool to see someone reinterpret one of my videos as a look 
And also it made me like look back at some of the stuff that I used to love using and because just because of the sheer like volume of things I forget about the things that I love. And so I'm gonna use this. I absolutely adore this. So this is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I will link Hope Mess Tom's video down below and Beth's video down below. They're both lovely, long form videos. I think that there should be a tag. I feel like there should be a, like they're shorts and then I feel like there's like under 20 minutes and then there's like over 20 minutes, you know, or even like over, like my stuff people get disappointed if it's under 30 minutes kind of thing. And I feel like sometimes that's the only content you're looking for because you want to just turn it on and like vibe. And I want like a specific hashtag for that. If I can make something like that catch on. Is that not just so pretty, especially for a low coverage look like this because it's got a little tiny bit of like rosiness to it, but yes, yeah, in the shade light. Okay, the other reason I was going to mention Hope Miss Tom was they, they saw this brush and they were like, <sighs> khaki? What is that? Like I have brushes and that's like the biggest brush that I've ever seen. So the thing with this, this is the BK 105. It's so dense and flat that it just kind of, you're only really using like this part, like the very middle portion of it. And I just pat like this and Beth had this one and she was using it. So this, I don't know. I just feel like it works kind of like a sponge and it disperses the product really sheerly and evenly and I'm honestly considering like I wanted to leave them a comment. I left them a comment but I didn't want to, I wanted to be like I'm sending you the brush but I'm afraid that they wouldn't use it and Tom's like really specific about you know not having a collection that they're not going to get use out of and so I wouldn't want to like almost you know peer pressure them into using it <laughs> like oh Kagi sent me this like no but Tom let me know. If you want me, if you want me to send you the BK 105, I will. That just added life back to my face. I went the whole weekend without wearing any makeup because I was trying to just let this live. Oh, it's really nice to see myself with some like enhancements again. Because not only was I not using any like makeup at all, I also like wasn't like, you know, kind of giving myself the really dewy moisture treatment that I typically would, where it's like, if I'm not wearing makeup, I'm gonna just like shellac myself in a moisture cocoon. No, I just kind of looked like a desiccated carcass all weekend. But like fashion, that's not a dig on myself. I'm not that person who's like, oh my gosh, I, have a mental image of myself, like my my mental self is not my like worst self, you know, where I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, this is what I'm really like. I understand that I'm a shapeshifter and I, th I think that that's empowering, you know? Plus it's kind of fun to be a little bit incognito sometimes, like you put on no makeup and no one, no one looks at you and it's kind of cool. So I watched Lisa J Makeup, who owns BK Beauty, use this new one. This is the new 112. She's like, use it for cream blush. And I'm telling y'all, look at it. It's so little and it's fluffy and you wouldn't think to use this for cream blush, but it's fabulous for it. So this is the shade Mood. Come on, I have goosebumps. So this is one of the products that I was talking about when I said like y'all requested comparisons of things in my last this or that video that I didn't own yet. And I just bit the bullet and just bought this just because it was suggested, but like, I'm so glad that I did. Look at that color. That is like my ideal Fjords color. Yes, it's a less appetizing version of what I prefer because I do really like it when it's fuchsia, you know, going towards that pink right there. But unfortunately that's not a shade I wear super well. That is like storm cloud paint. That's a shade I wear super well. So let's put it on. All right, let's answer a question while I do that. I'm so happy to be back in the saddle right now. It makes me feel so much like myself. The first thing that I see is Ingrid asking, what's your favorite kind of potato with a dog emoji? So this is a joke from when I will, I'll let y'all in on this. It's not even that inside of a joke. I'm just going to tell you about it. So I was in the city on Wednesday to Tuesday night to Wednesday going to a, an influencer event. I got to meet some TikTokers. I got to hang out with Kelly and then I stayed with Ingrid and we had the best time. Just the whole thing was just so awesome. And that night, I think it might have been at the Bowery. I'm not sure if it was there or like they came there afterwards. I think it was actually the place that they went to before that. So I'm not really sure. But Ingrid and Erica ordered um, a baked potato that was on the menu. And then they, <laughs> they realized after the fact that it was $99. <laughs> 
and it was covered in caviar. <laughs> and so there is like this joke that like, she's like, I'll never forget this potato. But then her dog's name is Tato. And Tato is an elderly Pomeranian who has been through some stuff, okay? He was found on the roadside in uh, Riverside, California. And like, yes, you know, purebred uh, Frappuccino, purebred Pomeranian. Tato is, he's kind of a grump, but grumps are kind of my favorite personality in an animal. Like, I love grumpy animals. And he's kind of like a grumpy cat. And so he reminds me a lot of Purr Monster, my personal grumpy cat, who's, you know, my favorite in the world. And so the last time that I like went to her apartment, I just, you know, made friends with Tato. I kind of got on his level because I'm, I believe it's because I'm already on this wavelength of, you know, vibing with Purr Monster. Purr Monster doesn't always want to be just like cuddled and pet, but he like wants to be on you and near you. And he wants to have everything on his terms. And there's just like this kind of loving holding of space that I do for him. And it's just this like mutual affection. And I feel like Tato just like read that energy right off me and was like, oh, you're a safe person to be vulnerable around. And so he just immediately like, you know, just locks on to me when I come in. And Erica, especially, Ingrid's already seen it happen before, but Erica is like, oh my God, he never does that. Like what's going on? And then that night, cause I, you know, they, they made the guest room out for me and everything. And that night I send, uh, I texted her a picture and it's of Tato, like <laughs> curled up in, in the fold out bed with me. And she was like, what? And I was like, he stayed there all night. Like he came and slept in the bed with me all night, which is just apparently totally unheard of. I've never felt more special in my life that like Tato chose me. And so when she said, I'll never forget that potato, I was like, I'll never forget this potato. And I had a of Tato. So yeah, Tato's my favorite kind of potato. <laughs> And yes, it is named after the Irish potato chips. <laughs> Somebody just asked, Snoopy? Oh, if you haven't seen that video. What is your opinion on Taylor Swift? I am suddenly feeling the peer pressure to become a Swifty. I, you know, I'm an emo kid at heart and it really seems like people are having these like very emotional experiences with Taylor Swift's music right now. And I'll admit like I've never disliked her music. Even the country stuff has always been like, she's a great songwriter. I don't know why, I, th I think there's some kind of like, you know, snobby indie kid chip on my shoulder that's just never, you know, made room for her music in my life. But like, why not, you know, why not? Plus I follow Carrie Dayton and she's like a diehard Swifty. And I'm like, all right, well, if Carrie can get into it, I wanna get into it, you know? Like Carrie and I are like almost the same age. So I don't know, I just love the idea of being able to like get into something new at my age. I'm not like, oh, I'm so old. But like, I do feel like we kind of get locked into our music taste of like whenever we were <laughs> our most emotionally vulnerable in our teens and twenties, you know, and to be able to like get into something new would be cool. So I don't really have an opinion on her specifically other than that I think she's, you know, probably great. But, uh, but yeah, unfortunately I just haven't gotten a chance to like get into her music yet. Who or what is your blush muse? My kid. I wish I could show y'all a picture of him, but it's his, he has these naturally flushed cheeks all the time. And this like, these like flaxen curls that are, oh my God, it's just, he's incredible. So he's my muse in general. He's just so much fun. He makes me love everything all over again in this very like innocent childlike way. All right, let's do some eyeshadow. Somebody said that this is not supposed to be the consistency of calamine lotion. <laughs> So I should shake it more, but this is the Kaleidos Tone Activator. It worked great when I used it before with the ABH palette, but yeah, I'm gonna use this as my primer because I don't know, after using something like, you know, Pat McGrath shadow that kind of sticks itself, I feel like in order to get the pure payoff that you can from an Aether shadow, it helps even more to use primer. Yeah, you're right. It's a little thicker. It's, you can feel a little bit more grip when you put it on. It's not supposed to be calamine lotion consistency. But even if you don't shake the heck out of it, it still works really well. I'd say the only thing there is like, why don't they make different shades in eye primers? Why are they all like white girl colored? Like I get that it's, oh, it's a primer and it's gonna make things show up, but it's like, I don't know. Dude, I'd rather like a primer just look like 
I mean, it looks like my skin tone. Why can't it look like someone else's skin tone? I'm not trying to like be performative here. I just think it's a little bit weird, you know? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not thinking it through per perfectly, but I'm like, that's a concealer color for me. That doesn't feel right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna swatch all these and I'm gonna do it pretty small because like I don't have a whole lot of room, but I just want y'all to see and it'll help me make some decisions too. I just had the moment, like <laughs> in this exact moment realization that it is Halloween, the day that I'm filming this and it is the day that the new Makeup by Mario palette comes out. So add to cart, check out, done. So this is the Manifest palette, the new one from Aether. And we have like the outside colors right here and the interior four right here. The interior four are almost just toppers with the exception of that bright pink. And then the other ones are just extremely practical. It kind of reminds me of the new Makeup by Mario one and that is why I just was reminded to buy it. And then one of my viewers messaged me and was like, hey, actually the new Makeup by Mario one kind of looks like that Wayne Goss palette, the pearl palette that's always sold out that I'm obsessed with. And so we might just end up with like a really great like three-way comparison video if this continues to like feel this way. I've only used this on top of something that I was already wearing. Like I already had like a little bit of an eye look going and I just smashed some of this on. And so I am excited to do like an absolute from the ground up kind of look here. But like these mattes, oh, she can really kill it with a matte. The mattes are so consistent and beautiful. Like of course this, so this song, this song, this color just sings to me. But I love that these two right here are the same saturation level. Like they're the same amount of color, but one is warm and one is cool. I'm telling you, Tyla knows color theory and she knows makeup theory. But like, we're also, I, I would be failing you if I didn't use this shade right here. Like, look at this shift. It's like charcoal to purple with like a tiny bit of gold in it. We might go for a little bit of drama. A little bit of drama on my eyes today, y'all. Yeah? Let's start with this huge A503. It's so fluffy. And I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the cool tone, the lavender right here. Tom also made me aware of I mean, granted, they were following a makeup playtime video, which is just not designed to really be tutorial style. But at the same time, I could be clearer about step by step what I'm doing. So yeah, the other thing here, be wary. It's a little bit like fluffy, fallouty, which is another reason. It's like high, high pigment. This doesn't mean it's low quality. It's just kind of like ABH in the sense that you know, you have to be a little bit more careful, but it's gonna go on really, really smoothly and evenly and really like fluff on and not stamp. So that is a cool enough lavender that even as it's turning pink on me, which everything does, it's still maintaining a lot of its believable cool tone shadow. Do you see how like it's kind of showing right there almost a little bit gray in the shadow? That's what I'm looking for. That's the illusion I'm trying to build. And then I'll go with the peach one kind of up here because again, same tone value, but a lot warmer. Yeah, I'm not getting fallout, which is good. Just because the primer and then tapping my brush off, it's going on really beautifully. I like that these are really sheer. They're nice for, you know, fair skin. It's kind of like a slightly deeper, more complex, maybe a little more range version of rose quartz, but still very easy to use straight from the pan. All right, I'm gonna take the A503 here, same brush, and I'm gonna go in with, like I said, the peach version. And you can see that's quite a bit of pigment. And I'm gonna go above, all the way, almost all the way up to the brow bone. I'm really just spread that out. So layering that on top, you can see how it's like, more true peach here, and then we still preserve a little bit of that shadow right there. And I can keep building on it too. But I'm barely touching it in the pan. I really feel like the formula kind of reminds, more so than her previous palettes, the formula reminds me a lot more of like the ABH formula right now. The way that those mattes are so smooth, but they don't quite have as much of their own stick as they have before. I could be totally wrong, like my memory just might not be serving me properly, but I don't remember them, you know, kind of needing a primer before. Cool, yeah, it's kind of going with my cheeks a little bit. I'm gonna take the Angie Hodden Flashy. We're really playing just in the mattes right now. I'm gonna go with this one, and I might even work into the really dark one. I just wanna show the range here. Oh, let's get another question. Where can I buy affordable art not 
stuff from home goods but low prices there are definitely probably definitely probably uh you know better places like individually to buy art from if you were to like find the actual artists and things like that to like buy from their you know big cartel stores or something like that but you know society six is a great spot they do pay artists they don't pay artists super duper well is my understanding but they do pay them and then etsy man etsy has become i know that they get a lot of flack because there's a lot of drop ship stuff on there but there's also some really cool stuff and that is what i try to showcase on my like instagram stories and stuff i have a uh, saved like highlight on my instagram that's called uh, fashion finds and most of it's on etsy it's like cool jewelry and like cool like kimonos and robes and like you know just sweaters and like just cool crap that I find and it's always less expensive than you know when that style has been stolen and regurgitated by Revolve you know or like anthropology or something so I always find really cool stuff there um and you can find really good art there too just kind of you know they're they're really doing the most to try and make sure their stuff is findable for you and then when you do find one person's thing make sure you just like look at the tags that they're using because they probably know their kind of like creator community the best and then you know search among those tags and see if there's other stuff that you like even more and then pay the people <laughs> pay the artists yeah i actually i have a really exciting video coming up i went on etsy and i just i don't know i don't know something got into me i decided to try it and i'm like really excited about it because i bought a mystery makeup box so i'm gonna do like a mystery unboxing and then i'm gonna create a whole look out of it it's not just gonna be like an unboxing where i'm like wow neat cool or oh this is stupid like i'm actually going to like create a look and like do a whole outfit with it and everything if i if i can but i liked it because it wasn't some kind of liquidation thing it was a person a person who let you say things that that you didn't want or let you say what your skin tone was and then they'll kind of curate it for you with design so that you can try new makeup not to just like offload a bunch of crap is my understanding and so I'm actually really stoked to do that it should be here this week so I'll do that'll probably be my first first impressions video in a long time it's like kind of exactly what it's for is to be a first impressions kind of video so that was on etsy too more than anything i think it's just gonna be really fun to watch to just get out like everybody's like get out of your comfort zone and i've always been trying to find ways to do that it just never occurred to me i'm like i love watching mystery unboxing videos and so i was like maybe there's a makeup mystery box i know this is looking very much like a typical eye look from me i kind of think that's the point this is a very good eyeshadow palette for people who have my Fjordsy, mucky mauve kind of preferences because it's just giving the drama, right? So what was the one I said we needed to use this one? Yeah. Wow. But I want to do something under it because I feel like it, when it spreads out, it's got this really pretty dimension to it, but it's going to need something backing it. And I'm wondering if we don't go like dark brown all over my lid or maybe we use, I think it's this one. Look at that. This really beautiful kind of it's slightly iridescent plum and i will use this new one that i got from bk this is 209 it's like a longer but like narrower flat brush and i'm gonna grab that plummy shade doesn't want to fall out that wants to stick to my brush i like that it goes on sheer it's going to give me the ability to build on top of it with other stuff and show you all as many colors in the palette as i can there are 12 in here so it's not like i'm gonna put every single one on my eyeball today they really layer beautifully now if i would have put that on with my finger <laughs> i would have gotten a lot more opacity i could tell by swatching it but the brush picks up a really medium amount do you see it kind of build and then you get a little bit of the sheen and i think that you could get away with using that in the crease it's almost matte it's like matte with a like slight blur to it like that kind of comes off as a sheen in the light but it's not by any means like glittery or like distorting the light in any way and i'm actually going to take that on a short brush here bk204 and i'm gonna put it underneath my eyes as well just a little like in the lash line on the outer corner because it's pretty dark but i like to use something this texture on the lower lash line because i like it to just be really blurry under there you see it's even still a little stark so i'll break it up with another color so i am going to take that shade right here what is it called it's called transcendent and look at it look at how it shifts in the light we have purple and then we have kind of black so it is quite nice and sheer 
and it's Halloween, so it's appropriate to be a little bit spooky. Wow! That's fun. Kind of goes with my nails too. It's laid out pretty carefully for you. It's almost always the outer eight are like your intuitive shades to use. That doesn't mean that they're unexciting because obviously I just pulled some pretty exciting shades out of there, but they're going to be the more like, you know, natural composition of the shades and how you might compare, com combine them. But then like these inner ones are usually either like toppers or a pop. And so these are the toppers and a pop right here. So I think we will use the pop. What say you? I have the 210. This one is also, I think, a new a new shape. And I'm gonna dip it into this pink. I think it's really pretty. And see how like when the light hits that, it kind of goes a little bit purpley fuchsia anyway. I feel like I'm gonna kind of chase that feeling on the inner corner. Ooh, electricity. Yep. Ooh, I'm really glad I did that. That is cool. It looks like I have light coming from behind my eyelids. <laughs> and then I can actually take a pearl color that's in the toppers. Actually, there are two pearl colors. So there's one that's like a topper and then there's one that's more opaque. I think I'm gonna take the more opaque one and just do my inner corner with it and blend it in with the pink. Just the very, there, ooh, girl, that is cool. Yeah, her satins really pack a punch. I'm just taking a little bit of like pink that's left on my brush and I can hear Lisa gender snaps right now being like, oh God, oh no, pink around the eyes, absolutely not, you know, because redheads, a lot of times they just, they just don't wanna do it. It makes you look sick. But like, we talked about this before, I'm kinda into sick around the eyes. I kinda am. It's just, it's sort of, it's sort of something that, I don't know, I just think it looks cool. And that is really, really wild looking. I'm gonna go underneath my eyes a little bit. Take the 211. I'm gonna use that first shade, that kind of uh, cool tone move. And I'm gonna blow out underneath my eyes and also pull it out like that. And follow me on this, but I feel like pink needs to be up here too. Do you see how this is almost orange now compared to this? Cause like this is, this looks like something that might be achieved by reality on my skin. And this is looking very otherworldly, which on some people would be totally fine. But for me, it just makes it look like I kind of only have makeup on my eyelids and it's like round, it's just so round. And so I want to take a little bit more of that pink, that really bright freaking pink and like put it here. Just that's what, my eye wants to see. Do you know what I mean? Like that's just what would please me at the moment. These are not a Natasha Denona shadow in the way that like they're going to stamp and never move again. They're very, very washable. I mean, okay. I have an eyeliner from Cali Ray. They sent me a few, but I'm gonna use the brown today. And my only kind of misgiving here is just that these don't really completely dry down. Like they stay so blurry and blurrable. I don't, I'm gonna put it on obviously, but like, I don't know, it's not even that dark. I feel like Cali Ray is not necessarily best used in this set of circumstances. Like Cali Ray kind of wants to be a really chill face of makeup, but you gotta be able to like, you know, bend to fit in some ways. It can't just be one customer. So this is like not a waterline eyeliner in my opinion, but it is a nice like soft color. This is not a long wearing formula. I don't feel like it's going to freeze down at all. I just don't really like it. It kind of blends away. I don't want like a liquid eyeliner, but I do want my eyeliner to like, show up and be spreadable. I don't know, I feel like I'm not really giving it a good enough chance. Let's let's try some more here. Cause maybe it does dry down. No, it really, it really just comes back up. <sighs> I wanna love Cali Ray so bad because I feel like I am that person who is like always disappointed by the new clean brands. Like when Say first came out, I tried them, I got right on the ball, you know, and I tried them right when they first came out. And I reviewed literally all their worst products which honestly was like their entire range in the beginning. That's fine. I think I might still go in right on my lash line with something darker. My, my camera cut me off. I am putting the Persona Brown Eyeliner on because I officially don't love the Cali Ray the way that it looks, but 
remember Kelly Gooch saying in a video recently, she was like, I feel like so many brown eyeliners aren't actually brown, they're black. I kind of agree, but I kind of prefer the ones who that are subtly brown. You know, there are almost black like this. Like, look at the difference between the two. But a black eyeliner would be really harsh on me. But, Kelly, you might like the Cali Ray one. It's not waterproof, but it is regular brown. My eyelashes are not light. They are dark, but they're not black. So this matches my eyelashes better. And that's the whole idea for me of an eyeliner is to make my lashes look thicker and to make my eyes look bigger. It's giving witchy. It's giving asymmetry. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do brows and mascara, and then we'll do some lips and probably some finishing touches. the formula at all, but I don't think that that Merit blush stood up to this look. It's just a lot on my eyes and I want to chase that feeling rather than trying to tan my eyes down. So someone pointed out in my comments on my Sephora recommendations video, my Sephora sell recommendations video, they were like, did the RMS blushes just like not make the cut? And I was like, I genuinely forgot about them. And that is because I put them away trying to clean and then I just, I don't know, I just overlooked them for some reason or maybe thought that I was gonna like remember to mention them and I just didn't. So I'm gonna use some of them today. I'm going to start because my brain just went like seeing this eye look went straight to hanky panky. So that's, that's where we're going right now. <laughs> Ooh, I like this one. This is the 107. I think this is new too. So it's like fluffy, but it's round, but it's angled. And then dibby dibby dab dab, you know? I also don't have any contour on yet, but whoo, yes. I am so glad that someone pointed that out because I mean, my memory is imperfect. And so is my organizational style, which is to say that it is non-existent. Ingrid was talking about how there are people who are organized and there are people who live in piles. You guys can guess which one I am. Let's go French Rose. Same brush, Gorgy Porgy. And it's giving that kind of like uh, translucent vibe that I feel like the skin tint was already doing. I'm gonna build a little bit of contour with the Charlotte Tilbury right here. This is the Filmstar Bronze and Glow. Just give us some boundaries. Pat, pat. I am really digging the like electric pink accentuated with that pearly shade right there in the inner corner. Ooh, that's so much better. Contour makes all the difference. That's a good one too because it, it's gray for sure, but it's like if I bring it down on my forehead, it doesn't start to look muddy and it can shorten my forehead a little bit. You can do me a little bit of those favors. All right, I have two shades here from Cali Ray. We're gonna use one of these. So I have Likely Story and Free Palomas. <laughs> Palomas are my favorite. Likely Story is more of like a coral and then Free Palomas is a more of a desaturated beige. But that is what they look like. So we're gonna go desaturated beige and I'm going to use my lip liner. But in the interest of using things that are available at Sephora, maybe I will use one of the Tower 28 ones. I don't know, let's do it. Maybe I can just do it really softly. Maybe not, but we'll see. That is the shade Draw Me. And it actually has a little bit of violet under it, which is nice. It's not going red. So it actually works as a pretty good contour. I just have to blend it enough that it doesn't look um muddy. Can y'all see now why I want to do a mystery box? I love just kind of like taking what I have in front of me and making it work. Cause sometimes it's about a specific craving for a specific look. And sometimes this is just about seeing where it leads you. Cause I think that sometimes 
when we've used the same makeup for so long, yeah, we get to loving it and everything and like understanding how to use it, but it does kind of limit us in terms of creativity. And like that lip, that lip liner made a big difference. It's just a little bit funky, you know? It did something unexpected. So that's uh, a Halloween vibe for y'all. Let's chat really quickly about these new ones, the prices and the claims, and then I will close with my final thoughts. All right, Kelly Ray, free deeming clean blurring skin tint is $39 and you get an ounce, I wanna say. Yeah, one fluid ounce comes in 10 shades, which I do think that they expanded because initially I didn't have a shade in it. Uh, light coverage, liquid formula, hydrating, natural finish, clean and planet positive, no silicones. What it is, a clean, super lightweight tint with 94.5% natural origin ingredients and regenerating antioxidants that hydrates and blurs to minimize imperfections. Prickly pear extract, so it's antioxidant. Vitamin C and E to firm and plump and jojoba oil amps up cellular energy, detoxifies and helps skin glow. Breathable, topless texture. They do have kind of this like pun game going, right? Of, you know, beachy California stuff that's a little bit, a little cheeky, you know? So topless texture with a nothing's there feel and natural finish. The sheer but buildable coverage blurs and diffuses but lets your skin shine through. Each shade is inviting to a range of skin tones and types. Bottle is made of 75% recycled plastic and can be recycled. So that's pretty cool. The glazed and infused no burn plumping lip gloss gloss is $19. I don't know. I mean, I get that they say that it's plumping and it is pretty, but when there's no burn, I'm not sure if I notice it. You know what I mean? I kind of need the pain to feel the gain. And there are five shades in this. It says vegan, high shine finish, plumping, hydrating, cruelty free, clean lip gloss that glides like an oil, hydrates like a cushiony balm, and has biomimetic peptide to plump your lips now and over time. Hydration from water binding prickly pear Extract gives immediate fullness effect. The formula includes avocado oil and squalene rich green coffee seed extract to prevent dryness. Gloss plumps with a soothing, nourishing feel, no burn. Tube is made from sugarcane bioplastic and cap is made from 94% recycled plastic. We like to see the normalization of these things. The Easy Glider Eye Definer Waterproof Eyeliner Pencil. I don't think it's, I don't think it's waterproof. It's not, like, it starts to kind of rehydrate. If you kind of lick your finger, you get a little bit of like an emulsion on your finger. I don't know, maybe it's a limitation of wanting to have really clean ingredients or something, but it just does not perform like a waterproof product. Three shades in this, it's $20. What it is, a long wearing clean stay in place pencil that glides on for perfect sharp lines with a smudgeable application and waterproof wear. So they say that it is smudgeable. So maybe it's just a really, really long time before it completely sets down. But like, I, I, I don't find it to be long wearing personally. Highly pigmented, super soft, clean formula with a glidey feel and velvet finish. Waterproof and long wearing, this liner will stay on for sweating, ocean swimming, or any other salty activity. Comes in a sugarcane barrel for easy sharpening and sexy sustainability. Sugarcane, eh? So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, maybe on other people that's true. I just don't find it to be particularly long wearing. I don't find it to be high pigment. Especially because I've just been immersed, fortunately for myself, immersed in unbelievably good eyeliner formulas lately. I didn't even used to use eyeliner. I always used eyeshadow on a wet brush, but I've moved to eyeliners like proper because I found such, or they found me, such good eyeliner formulas lately. Persona, LH Cosmetics, and of course, Victoria Beckham, if you're willing to pay the money. All right, so that was it for Cali Ray. Thank you to Cali Ray for sending me these products to try. And I will continue using them and updating y'all on them, but I will have final thoughts at the end, kind of, you know, in a, in a smash or pass mode. Oh, look the Merit Flush Balm just shows up right there in those results. So this is $28. I do wanna say that they've changed the packaging. It used to be gray plastic and has gold. Comes in five shades and vegan, Allure 2022 clean beauty winner, community favorite, clean at Sephora, fragrance free and cruelty free. A foolproof flexible balm that deposits a creamy transparent veil of color to let your skin show through. So, I mean, the claims check out. It is really sheer. And it's kind of like their bronzer in that sense where it's super pretty, but like only if you're really going for that kind of coverage, like that kind of face of makeup. And like, you know, some days I am, today I was not. Soft and flexible, this buildable balm glides onto skin and is perfect for your face or lips. <laughs> why I'm getting so hung up. I'm not wearing my glasses, that's why. The lightweight formula delivers a visible long lasting glow that's never cakey, won't clog pores, while microfine pigment powders deposit a touch of color without covering up the natural texture of your skin. So yeah, I mean, it is truly effortless, no makeup makeup. 
and I would say that it is definitely a formula that my skin eats and then I would put more on if I so desired but today it was like <laughs> once I got that manifest palette on there was really no going back and like this was just not going to be able to rise <laughs> to what I needed it to be today you know to have my cheeks do really much of anything so that's why we went RMS because they pack a pigment punch. All right, so I apologize for the bait and switch. I'm not sure if it's gonna be on Sephora, but it is not yet on Sephora. The Manifest Crystal Palette. It's hard to keep track sometimes of which products from which brands are site exclusives and which ones are on the Sephora website. And so I just assumed that this one would be there for the sale. It might be there eventually, I'm not sure. But this is the new Aether Manifest Crystal Palette. And like I said, they're 15% off with my code down below. Khaki15, I think is what it is. And so, you know, 5% difference. Either way, what it is, radiate and smolder under vast desert skies with our newest limited edition eyeshadow palette, the Manifest palette. Have all eyes on you with sultry violets and pops of pink to bring your inner muse to life. Infused with amethyst powder to illuminate with light reflecting crystals, our formula glides on with no pulling, tugging, and most importantly, high color payoff. Go ahead, shine bright, and manifest the gorgeous muse you are. Oh, and then the, I, I wanted to talk, this came in a set, like I said, of uh, $65 you know for all three plus a sheet mask but I don't know like I just think that's a really good deal this is the tiger grass color correcting treatment I don't know how much it is by itself holy crap are you serious this is the 1.7 ounce yeah y'all this alone is $52 and then the set that they're doing is ceramidin is like almost $50 and they're doing a full size of both of those, a full size tiger grass sleep hair intensive mask and the sheet mask to try for $65. Like that's wild. That's a wild deal. <laughs> like that's fire sale. I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rad. So I highly recommend doing that. I'm gonna be wearing that a lot more lately, especially because it's SPF, that's that's great. So final thoughts, final thoughts, final thoughts. Since this was what went on first, A plus. I mean, gorgeous, and it'll last me, I think, forever. And the small one is 20 bucks, and then you still get the 20% off. But, I mean, geez, $65 for this, and then you'd get an extra 20, I mean, if you're VIB Rouge, but, you know, 10, 15% off even of that. That is a wild deal. That is a wild deal for this, if it's something that appeals to you, that's insane. This is really fine. <laughs> it, there's absolutely like nothing wrong with it, but I always say great is good. This is a very, like if you buy this, you're not gonna be mad about it. I feel like your expectations are set correctly. There's nothing weird about it. It's very pretty. It reminds me a lot of the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. So if you like that, you'll probably like this, but if you have that, you probably don't need this, you know? I know that the Super Serum Skin Tint is like $48, so this being $39, it could be a better deal for you, and they're both silicone free. This does not, I don't think, have any SPF in it, so that might also be a good thing for you. I don't know, but either way, that's what it reminds me the most of. And you can see it on the skin. It's a pretty nice finish, and it does tolerate powder. It's not quite as dewy. It's not quite as serum-y as the, as the Ilia, which could also be a good thing, because that is really like, it's for people who need hydration throughout the day. And this is hydrating, but it's not that like, you know, heavy, intensive kind of hydration that that one can give you. So yeah, I really like it. But like, again, it's not, I, I can't even really necessarily remark on any like standout qualities of it. You know, it's just pretty good. Updating my thoughts here on the Minimalist from Merit. I think it's very pretty. It does hold powder nicely, by the way. I, I know that y'all probably don't even notice it, but like my skin is even more textured than usual because, and you guys see me, I keep scratching. I have a rash from antibiotics that's just like everywhere kind of, it's like worst on my neck, but even my forehead has this like micro texture on it from it. And so everything is gonna look a little bit worse right now. That's just how it is. So I'm psyched to be done with those soon. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's making everything more difficult, but it is a means to an end. Either way, I, uh, I do really actually like this a lot. I, again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would recommend it over the West Metelier. I do think the West Metelier is better, I do. But 
No. Yeah, I think the West Mentelli is better. It does have a little bit more dewiness to it, but I, I mean, I'm dry skinned and I still can wear the West Mentelli absolutely no problem. So. Maybe it's not coconut oil based. Maybe if it doesn't have coconut oil in it, let me see. So it doesn't have coconut oil as like the main ingredient in it, which might be an advantage for some people. It also has a little bit of silicone in it, which I don't know, might help it wear a little bit more lightly, but it still has capricyclosteride as the second ingredient. So I guess it's more about like whether you're allergic specifically to, you know, coconut oil. But again, I mean, it's, it's good but it's not, I, there's nothing that I can particularly like, you know, a run, do not walk situation. I would recommend the West Mediterranean ahead of it because it just does some things I can't even explain, <laughs> you know, the way that it disappears into your skin with a ton of coverage, but it just it looks imperceptible. The West Mentelier is just, it's a little more magical and I do feel like it's um, worth the investment. I've heard some people say that the Kelly Ray lip gloss is just a lip gloss and that is where I would place it. It is squarely in the realm of that's just a lip gloss. It's pretty, it's smooth, it's nice, but like, I wouldn't spend my money on it. You know, it's, I, I think that maybe if the component felt a little more luxurious or something, but it kind of feels like drugstore to me. A $19 lip gloss. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say anything that's gonna like, you know, feel sincere about going and spending $19 on this. Nothing about that feels, nothing about that feels good to me. <laughs> I also feel that way about the eyeliners. I feel like we really sacrificed performance for all the claims. I feel like I'm back in clean beauty world, you know, where everything was just like, you know, these high flown claims, but it was really about the feel good of knowing that you were buying from a clean company. And I feel like everyone has claimed that their ingredients are clean now. That like, if the performance isn't there, the performance isn't there. And I just feel like the, this is too light of a shade, the brown, to like really give me enough impact. And that might appeal to you if you're really fair and or you have light eyelashes and this is just very like, you know, very, very dark for you. But I think that the main thing is just that it's not very long wearing, you know, it's pretty movable kind of forever. And like that is a deal breaker for me because that's literally like the, one of the main things it's claiming is that it's like waterproof and long wearing. So eyeshadow palette. <laughs> Okay, so this one is really unique. I do feel like it kind of smashed together the old Amethyst palette, the old Rose Quartz palette, and then, I don't know, like, there's a little bit even of like crystal grid in here, and it's a full size, whereas like before we had, you know, the Desert Sunset one that I like so much is 10 shades, and this is one of the like original size ones with 12 shades in it, so. They have really like given you a lot of options. The quads are really affordable. The medium sized ones are good. And then this is like, this is so many looks. This is so many looks. And I feel like if you are passionate about this particular color family, there are lots of ways to go with this. The only thing that I would caution against is just understand that these are, yes, they give color impact, but they're not designed to be like, you know, seen from the check cashing place around the corner. They're really pretty. <laughs> they're really, really pretty. They're easy to use, they're easy to wear. And I mean, this is by no means like a shrinking violet kind of look, if you will. It is a dude, glowing violet, a screaming violet. But working with these formulas does not feel like working with, you know, it just doesn't feel like working with paints. It feels very much like working with these really beautiful, like, you know, organic feeling uh, pigments. And I, I think that that's the best description I can give of an Aether palette. It is, it's kind of like an Urban Decay palette in the sense that like, you know, you can fluff things on, you can blend them and like you can place them, you can, but you still end up with something that is very blended. Like they're always going to lend themselves really well to a blended application, less so to like a pat, pat, build, build, pack, pack kind of thing. Does that make sense? But like, man, when I hit it with some finishing spray, look at that sheen wild so pretty so pretty and it is it's kind of a showstopper with minimal effort so i like that a lot about it and it also just kind of pushes the boundaries i love this color story to begin with just on a conceptual level but it's like it took rose quartz and just pushed it in every direction outwards in terms of extremes and i think that that's really cool so I think that like you can probably tell whether this eyeshadow palette is for you. I've used the most 
remarkable shades in the palette on my eyes today. And I feel like you already know by watching this whether that resonated with you or not. You know, you watched it and you were like, ooh, or you were like, ooh, you know? So depending on your style of ooh, you already know. So I hope you'll enjoyed this extension of my Sephora sale recommendations, getting this in under the buzzer. If you did not already watch my Sephora sale video, I will stick that right here for you. And if you don't want to watch that, I'll stick another one over here for you that's recommended specifically for you. So like, comment, and subscribe. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.